leg of the Visa Triple Crown Challenge, the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby is about many things, drama, nostalgia, excitement, but most of all, it's about the thoroughbred, the most artistically conceived creature in the natural world and one of the last true amateurs in sport. They come to Churchill Downs as innocent youngsters to run a distance farther than they have ever run before, before an immense roaring crowd, the like of which they've never seen. They come for the first leg of racing's great trilogy, the Triple Crown. They come to run in the Kentucky Derby. Last year, Silver Charm gave us one of the great Triple Crown stories, first winning the Derby by a head, then taking the Preakness, but losing the Belmont. His trainer, Bob Baffert, loser by a nose the year before, celebrated a horseman's Derby dream come true. His entry today is doubly dangerous. There's the colorfully named undefeated Indian Charlie here winning the Santa Anita Derby, and the appropriately named Real Quiet, who just might speak past his stablemate. Every Derby day brings unexpected players to the game, like Boston Celtics coach Rick Pitino, who returns to the state for which he won the NCAA championship in 1996. Pitino's hopes lie today with Allery Hunter, conqueror of the previously undefeated Lil's Lad in the Bluegrass States. Pat Day, Churchill Downs winning as jockey, will be aboard favorite trick, last season's horse of the year as a two-year-old. Some of the shine rubbed off when he lost in Arkansas. Now he looks for redemption. Even the horses sense that today is different. This is what they were born for, their one chance to win the greatest race of all. Run, run as fast as you can. Run for the roses, run for glory, run to win the Kentucky Derby. We're at a point in history when many traditions are dead or dying, and yet others continue to thrive. Some even grow year after year. And so it is with this one, as nearly 140,000 people from the Commonwealth of Kentucky, from neighboring Indiana and Ohio and Tennessee, from all over the country, indeed the world, gather in Louisville. Some of them in the infield won't even see a horse all day, but it doesn't matter. Just to be here is why they're here. It's the first Saturday in May, and in the wonderful world of sport, there's no other place to be. Churchill Downs was built in the 1870s, and who could have imagined then that throughout the 20th century, this tradition would flourish and provide six generations with indelible memories. In about an hour, another chapter will be written as we bring you the greatest horse race in the world, the Kentucky Derby. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to Louisville. Maybe we should rename this officially the Wide Open Kentucky Derby. It seems to be that way every year, and 1998 is no exception. No favorite has won this race since 1979, so it's been almost two decades. Again, wide open this year, a field of 15, and of course, the cast of animals changes every year. This is a race for three-year-olds, so there's never a defending champion. But a lot of the key humans are back, and some of those key humans are in the saddles today. For instance, Gary Stevens will seek his fourth Kentucky Derby win. Jerry Bailey and Chris McCarron have each won this race twice. Pat Day has won it once. And so it's no surprise that those four are all in the Hall of Fame and all are on primary contenders today. Right now, Indian Charlie is a mild favorite as we take a look at the field of 15 for the 124th running of the Kentucky Derby. Breaking from the inside will be a maiden. That means this horse has never won a race. National lore, he's 99 to 1. Real Quiet, one of the Baffert horses, is 8 to 1. Then Hallory Hunter, who won the Bluegrass, 6 to 1. Cholito is a speed horse, 30 to 1. Hanneman Highway is an Irish bred, 20 to 1. Favorite trick, last year's horse of the year is 4 to 1. Then the favorite, the undefeated Indian Charlie at three to one. Rock and Roll is an outsider at 40 to one. Parade Ground is 20 to one. Cape Town, the Wayne Lucas horse, four to one as Wayne seeks his fourth derby. Artax comes in from the west at 11 to one. Victory Gallup came up through Arkansas impressively. He's 14 to one. Old Trieste has a lot of speed. He's 30 to one. And then in the field, Basic Trainee and Robin Wood are coupled in the mutual field. If you like one, you get them both at 50 to one. So many traditions, of course, for over a century, and another of those traditions is the presence of one Jim McKay calling his 24th Derby today down in the first turn. Welcome, Jim. 
Thanks very much, Alan. Thanks for those kind words. Well, you've referred to the principal figures in the Derby, the horses and the riders, but as always, there are also fascinating stories covering the connections of the horses, the owners and the trainers. Nobody expected a year ago, for example, that Rick Pitino, who had just left Kentucky for the Boston Celtics, would return as the owner of Hallery Hunter. The old line racing people are represented, however. Will Farish, the chairman of Ch uh, Churchill Downs, is here with the Long Shot Parade Ground. And John Gaines, the man who conceived the Breeders' Cup, will see his silks on the favorite, Indian Charlie. The Derby, however, is for the little guys, too. Indian Charlie himself, named for a tip sheet, is the product of a $3,000 mating. His stablemate, Real Quiet, was purchased for $17,000. Wayne Lucas comes with his 33rd Derby starter, seeking his fourth win. And Bob Baffert, last year's winner, has two horses, along with family and friends. What the paparazzi in this? I know that. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Until today, Bob Baffert's father had never been to one of his son's big races. But this year's different. Baffert has gathered his clan, family and friends, two of whom own his entries today. It's tough. It's, it, these are my friends. And it's tough for me to say, well, I hope this one wins or I hope that one wins. You know, I know in my mind which one horse, you know, I feel is probably right now is the better horse. And so that would be Indian Charlie. The only undefeated horse in the field. Hal Earnhardt, Charlie's owner, created this unlikely derby favorite by breeding his mare Soviet Sojourn to an excess for a mere $3,000. The derby is such a fantasy for Earnhardt, he even named his son Derby after the race. His name is uh, bringing a little uh, wrinkle to the, to the situation, so it's, 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 it's amazing. Animals are an Earnhardt family tradition started by Daddy Tex. They even use a steer in commercials for their car dealerships. And that ain't no bull. The no bull slogan is the genesis for the silks worn by Indian Charlie until today, when he'll switch to the colors of co-owner John Gaines, one of racing's legendary gentlemen. If Indian Charlie can't win today, Baffert's hoping his other horse, Real Quiet, will get it done. Real Quiet, another bargain purchased for $17,000, is owned by Mike Pegram, the man who urged Baffert to switch from water horses to thoroughbreds 13 years ago. Mike, to me, is like an older, wiser brother. And so when you have that kind of um, friendship, it makes my job a lot easier. When I met Bob, you know, when you you can just feel when you got chemistry with someone, I'm just glad he was a guy because I couldn't afford to get married again. But That's not going <laughs> to Hal Earnhardt never dreamed that introducing Baffert to Pegram would someday lead the three of them to Churchill Downs. However, a victory for either horse would be made sweeter by friendship. Last year it was more of a personal thing for me. This year it's for them. To win it with a friend and, and somebody that you feel is part of the family is something special. You can't even imagine winning a Kentucky Derby. I mean... To win at any time would be special. To win it with people you got so much respect for. We won't have to go to Disneyland because this is my Disneyland. Just a couple of guys leaning on a fence talking horses, but by nightfall, the silver-haired, silver-tongued Bob Baffert may just have his second derby win in a row. Now, Charles E. Candy will be all over this sprawling complex during our show this afternoon. Let's right, right now, let's see Charles e. in the jockey's room. I'm in the Jack's room with Gary Stevens, who'll be aboard Indian Charlie this afternoon. He seeks his fourth Kentucky Derby victory today. If he wins, he will tie Bill Shoemaker as the third all-time winningest jockey in Derby history. But, Gary, you've got to do it aboard a horse with very little experience. But you feel that that makes no difference. No, he's a very intelligent colt. He's done everything that's been asked of him. He's a great athlete. And uh, if he gets beat, it'll be because he's not good enough. But uh, we believe in our heart that uh, he can get the job done today. All right, a very confident Gary Stevens. Good luck to you. And we go back out to Al Michaels. Thank you, Charlie. There's Bob Baffert here with his friends and family. And there's another good pal of his, Silver Charm, last year's Kentucky Derby winner, winner of the Preakness, and recently winner of the $4 million Dubai World Cup. Silver Charm figures to be back in action sometime this summer. Bob never likes Silver Charm. Out of view. Can't blame him. We're back at Churchill Downs. You're looking at the blanket of roses, traditionally adorning the winning horse with post time about 47 minutes away for the running of the Kentucky Derby. You know, this is the 25th anniversary of one of the great performances of all time. A 1973 Secretariat won the Kentucky Derby. He's immortalized in the museum here. And Big Red went on to win the Preakness. 
and in an unforgettable Belmont Stakes, cruised to an amazing victory on a day. Dave Johnson, who works with us year after year, was the track announcer. Dave, you recall that day at Belmont 25 years ago, I'm sure, very fondly. I sure do, Al. But, you know, as a race caller, I'm used to margins of a neck, a nose, a half length. When, Bel when Secretariat roared into the stretch of the Belmont Stakes, I'd never seen a horse in front that far. I called him 25 lengths in front at the 16th pole, and he went on to win the Belmont Stakes and the Triple Crown. That race by 31 lengths. It was the greatest performance I'd ever seen by a thoroughbred. But Secretariat was not only good at age three, he was a sensational two-year-old. He was named the juvenile champion, and at age two, he was named Horse of the Year. Now, that didn't happen again until last year. And with more on that, let's go back to Jim McKay. Well, thanks very much, Dave. Of course, favorite trick was the first two-year-old in a quarter of a century to be named Horse of the Year. It's also been 19 years since a two-year-old champion, Spectacular Bid, won the Derby. So favorite trick has broken one streak. The other may be more difficult. Just a year ago today, on this track, on Derby Day, he won his first stakes race. Then he went on to win seven more stakes in a row before losing just three weeks ago in the Arkansas Derby. But how quickly they forget. He's been comparatively unnoticed here this week, and there are grave doubts about his ability to go a mile and a quarter. Is he a super horse or just a sprinter? Well, his record until the Arkansas race says super horse, but his breeding says sprinter, and that's what has observers confused. Secretariat, who would end up a national idol, also lost his last start before the Derby, remember? And favorite trick was more impressive as a two-year-old, going undefeated as he won the season-ending Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Then a strange turn of events, his trainer Patrick Byrne gave up the colt for a lucrative private training job, and suddenly Bill Mott, who has yet to win a Derby, had favorite trick in his barn. Bill knows about streaks. He trained Cigar to 16 in a row. But favorite trick was a different story. There could be a downside. He faced the possibility that he might not have a, 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 a three-year-old season like he had when he was a two-year-old. And uh, I thought about it, and I felt that it's still worth trying. And it almost makes it a bigger challenge for me, knowing uh, what a difficult task it would be to to have him go on and do as well. Mott took it slowly, keeping the colt away from the track most of the winter at a private training facility. Then he unveiled the three-year-old in the Swale Stakes. He won, but the race was at seven furlongs, the sprinter's distance. Then came Arkansas. The crowd made him a big favorite in the Arkansas Derby, but the nagging question was there, can he go a distance? And what was this? Favorite tricks roared through the first half mile in the speed duel with Battle Royale, who went off at 120 to 1. It seemed a suicidal pace. Favorite trick hung on until they came into the stretch. But could he go the full mile in an eight? That was the question of the day. Well, he couldn't, finishing third, but not quitting. Why did jockey Pat Day let him run those too fast fractions? I realized, you know, going under the wire the first time, uh, that we wasn't doing what I wanted to do. Uh, we were doing what Favorite Trick wanted to do, and, and I felt like that was going to be our demise. He was courageous in defeat, uh, never gave up. When them horses uh, swarmed him one on either side, uh, he just he just hung in there and kept fighting. And, and that was the first time in all of his races that he'd really been put to the test late like that. Uh, the way he responded was uh, certainly encouraging. So the sprinter's son comes to Derby Day as an unsolved mystery. Is he secretariat or just another speedball? Trader Mott points out that none of the Derby horses has yet caught a mile and a quarter. The mile and a quarter is going to be a big question for every horse in the race. This horse does not train like a sprinter, and he doesn't have action like a sprinter. I mean, he's a very smooth going, very efficient striding horse. I guess enough time has gone by already without, without a two-year-old champion winning, so winning the Derby, so uh, maybe it's time. Maybe it is, Bill Mott, who went into the Hall of Fame earlier this week. Or maybe it's time for somebody else. Perhaps, uh, well, it wouldn't be a surprise, of course, uh, to see a non-favorite win yet another time. And right now, as you look at Hallory Hunter, he is the fourth choice of the betters at odds of 6-1 to one with Indian Charlie, the favorite, Hallory Hunter comes off a win three weeks ago at the Bluegrass Stakes. You get Gary Stevens aboard. You're looking at Jerry Bailey, who will be riding Cape Town today, relaxing in the jockey's room. And the jocks can relax, but not so for the owners and the trainers. Their hearts start to pound right now as the horses come out of what they call the gap out onto the track. 
They'll walk around the first turn, then under the main grandstand and to the paddock as we get ready for the running of the Kentucky Derby. Post time, 42 minutes away. Part of the tradition of the Derby, the jockey's photo, all 15 gathering for that portrait about five minutes ago. Two of the jockeys uh, have never been in the Derby, and this guy's been here before, Sylvester Stallone, waving to the crowd as he entered Churchill Downs earlier today. We saw Jack Nicholson on the grounds about an hour ago. And, of course, uh, the Twin Spires framing one of the most famous venues in all of American sport. Let's take a look right now at the current odds, update you as we check out Indian Charlie the favorite at odds of three to one Cape Town is the second choice held at odds of four to one and favorite trick just behind him at four to one then this Hallory Hunter choice number four at six to one real quiet one of the Baffert horses at eight to one our a bit of an overlay I think a pretty good horse 11 to one victory gallop off two wins in Arkansas 14 to one Hanneman Highway, the Irish bread is 20 to 1. Parade Ground comes in from New York, 20 to 1. The Speedster Old Trieste at 30 to 1. Another Speedster Cholito at 30 to 1. Rock and Roll is 40 to 1. And then Basic Trainee and Robin Wood comprise the mutual field at odds of 60 to 1. National Lore at 99 to 1, at least 99 to 1. That's as high as the board goes. Well, Mike Smith has ridden in the Kentucky Derby eight times. It would have been a ninth trip, maybe on Hallory Hunter today, were it not for an injury he suffered in Florida a couple of months ago, but his shoulder is on the men. Figures to be back in a couple of weeks, and it's good to have you with us, Mike. You were down in the jockey's room, and let's talk about, first of all, Gary Stevens aboard Indian Charlie looking for his fourth victory. What's Gary's strategy today, and how confident is he? Well, I'll tell you, Al, in talking to Gary earlier, he told me he liked this horse towards the front, towards the front and in the clear. And if you remember in Santa Anita, at the Santa Anita Derby, he was able to get this horse back to relax and really finish strong. The horse is relaxed, and you saw a shot of Gary Stevens, and he's as relaxed as they get. You know, but for a jockey, this is, I mean, this is really a, a jockey's race. You have to look for that hole, pick the spot, have the clock in your head over a mile and a quarter, and a lot of uh, reputations can be made and ruined by your performance here. It certainly can. Uh, the eyes of America are watching this race today, and, and I tell you, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of nervous, nervous energy that's, that's going on right now, but it's positive energy. I remember Rick Bettino, who owns Holler Hunter, told me one time, he said, if you ain't nervous, you ain't ready. Well, a lot of people are very nervous right now as we're going to take a look right now at the Indian Charlie, who's making his way uh, from the barn. That's Bob Baffert. Bob, Bob Baffert. It perhaps signaling uh, that Real Quiet is another of his horses as he puts his finger to his lips, but he has Indian Charlie in tow. He has Real Quiet in tow as well, seeking his second consecutive derby win, and it affords us the opportunity to go down there and check in with Charles C. Canty. Charles C. Well, Al, I'm over here at the gap in the stable area where the horses will go over to the front side. We talk about how difficult the paddock is for these horses in the Kentucky Derby. Actually, the circus atmosphere starts back here in the stable area. There are barbecues and tents and souvenir stands and people wandering around and baby carriages. It takes a tough-minded horse to deal with this. This goes on all week long here. It won't ever happen again in their lives, but they've got to get through it today. Back to you. All right, thank you, Charles. See, you know, a funny thing, favorite trick actually ran here on Derby Day last year. Not in the Derby, obviously, but in one of the earlier races. So he is used to performing in front of an enormous crowd. Artax is a horse I mentioned before. He's a bit of an overlay at 11 to 1. This horse, at one point this winter, was the best in the West. Uh, a couple of impressive victories at Santa Anita. Then he threw in a bit of a clunker, finishing third and a distant third in the Santa Anita Derby, but he has finished in the money in all of his races and has the services of Chris McCarron today. So you cannot throw him out by no stretch of the imagination. So the horses working their way from the backside, from the barns, in front of the main stands, there is Victory Gallop with some local connections. Victory Gallop is the horse who defeated favorite trick in the Arkansas Derby. He also won the Rebel, which is the prep for the Arkansas Derby. The morning line odds were 15 to 1 and trained by Elliot Walden from seven generations of Kentucky horsemen. It's the first time the Walden family has been intimately involved in the Kentucky Derby. About a half hour 
before the gate will open and they'll be sent on their way. A field of 15, and Rick Pitino will look on with more than mild interest, the former coach at the University of Kentucky and now the Celtic coach and the owner of Hallery Hunter. And as we look at Cape Town, we can tell you that the 124th Kentucky Derby will continue our coverage from Churchill Downs, continuing after this message and a word from our ABC station. Really beautiful stories concerns the horse victory gallop. The Walden family has featured fathers and sons and grandfathers and great-grandfathers. There's Elliot Walden with his seven-year-old son, Will. They've been in this business for over a century, but it's the first time a Walden has been intimately involved in the Kentucky Derby, and we have Elliot Mike. And Elliot, I mean, just describe this feeling. You're the first Walden to make this walk during the Kentucky Derby. Well, it's a... Uh it's a real neat feeling, my Al, and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy it. There's nothing I can really do now to, to make the horse run any better. We've done our job, and it's all up to him. Lord willing, uh, we'll get lucky today. You feel pretty good about your chances? I do. He's trained well since the Arkansas Derby, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't change a thing of the way we've been doing it. Uh, he's worked on schedule. He's trained on schedule, so I feel pretty confident. Elliot, good luck to you. Savor the moment. Elliot Walden at age 35, the leading trainer at Churchill Downs last spring. And a seventh generation horseman. The celebrities out in full force. Dennis Hopper comes here a lot. Robert Duvall also in attendance today. From Lois and Clark, uh, Terry Hatcher in the stands enjoying yet another derby. And Jack Nicholson, since the Lakers were able to clinch early the other night, Jack caught a flight to Louisville before the Lakers go into their second round of the NBA playoffs. All right, let's check in right now with Leslie Visser. Leslie. Hi, Al. Well, this group is not the Phippses. They're not the Whitneys. They're not descendants of Kentucky Blue Bloods. But the merry band around Rick Pitino would make Damon Runyon proud. They were born in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty. Rick was raised in Manhattan. A guy they called Jersey Red, Ken Ford of Jersey City, New Jersey, and Nick Zito, born in Brooklyn and raised in Queens. Together, the ties that bind them and the loyalty they share is deeper than the bluegrass. This 25-year friendship began when Patino hired Jersey to cook for the Lambda Chi fraternity at the University of Massachusetts. Even in those days, he could talk a dog off a meat wagon. We're kicking the president out of his room. You've got the president's room, $135 a week, highest paid cook in America in fraternities. I looked at him and I said, this kid's nuts, but I had a good time here last night. I think I'll stay at least for the winter. Unfortunately for the frat brothers, Jersey spent more time drinking than cooking. He cooked wonderful for the first week. And from that point on, he, everything was in the fryer later. Nothing was, the oil was never changed. Most of the people had tomain poisoning. Then we fired him, but kept him in the house. And uh, from that point on, he taught us all the bad things that a college student should do. Patino has always remained close to his childhood friends. He helped Jersey in his fight to recover from alcoholism, and it was Jersey Red who introduced him to Nick Zito. Celtic Pride Stable was born with Rick as owner and Jersey as general manager, although Jersey kept his day job as culinary arts teacher at Durfee High School in Fall River, Massachusetts. Here goes mighty Kenny Swanaman. Now watch this one, guys. It's gonna be great. Wrong oven, Kenny. Doesn't get any better than a baked potato that hot from the oven to the plate to the customer. After a year-long search, Zito bought Hallery Hunter for $135,000 at the two-year-old sale at Keenly. Although Rick controls every move the Celtics make, he's been hands-off with the horses. Patino's seen Hallery Hunter run twice, and between Celtic games, he and Jersey Red went to a Boston racetrack to watch the Bluegrass simulcast. I've watched him win national championships. I've seen all the emotional roller coasters, the highs and the lows. I have never seen Rick as nervous as when they were putting that horse in the starting gear for the bluegrass. When that horse went across that finish line, we jumped up. And I'm going to tell you very honestly, the both of us wept. We cried. The hardest part for the coach may be his lack of control over the outcome of the race. Zito chose jockey Corey Nakatani, a decision which pleased Rick until he heard that Zito may have been influenced by a dream Jersey Red had back in December. I see Hollery Hunter, the blanket, in the winner's circle with a bed of roses over it. And I hear the name Corey Nakatani. I call Nicky and tell him about the dream. And all he says to me is, very interesting. 
don't tell anybody else about it yet. When Nick said we were going with Corey Nakatani, I said, well, where'd you find that name from? And he said, didn't you hear about Jersey's Dream? And then I tried to explain. Nicky, do you know that Jersey's a reformed alcohol? <laughs> and that, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of dreams, and that dreams are flashbacks. <laughs> Jersey wakes up any morning hitting the lottery, wakes up knowing this horse is going to win, and the man is never right. I just uh, have a good time. I'll drink a mint julep, and win or lose, I'll have a smile on my face. We're very passionate, emotional people. We will all cry. The Dom Perignon will flow. The pasta will be flying all over Louisville that night. You know, that's what it's all about. We're going to have fun. Well, quite a combination. Petito and Zito, a couple of big city Italian lads having a ball in the bluegrass. Despite having left Kentucky for the Celtics, Petito's really been given a big welcome here this week. And Nicky Zito, well, he said last week that he finds inner peace during Derby Week. Inner peace at the Derby, as the saying goes, Whatever works for you, Nick. Back to you, Al. All right, thank you, Jim. Well, Jerry Bailey and Chris McCarron enjoying a light moment. And why not? Between the two of those guys, they won the Derby a total of four times. The favorite is Indian Charlie, three to one. Here are some particulars now. The purse for the Derby is a million dollars. The winning connections take home about 700,000. And there's a look at favorite trick. Right now, the second choice of the betters. The distance is a mile and a quarter, and each of the horses carries 126 pounds. The post position is now brought to you by Dr. Pepper. There was a snafu earlier this week in drawing the post positions, but they got it cleared up, and the connections actually picked their posts. And we've highlighted in yellow some of the key horses. As you can see, Real Quiet and Hallery Hunter, two late runners, can both save ground at a post three and four. Favorite trick and Indian Charlie come out together from seven and eight, and then three good ones side by side by side in Cape Town, Artax, and Victory Gallop. A field of 15 going a mile and a quarter, and I'm joined once again upstairs by Mike Smith and by Dave Johnson. And guys, let's take a look now at some of these horses individually in a little bit more detail. Dave, first of all, Cape Town, there's Wayne Lucas seeking a fourth win. And this is a horse getting a lot of backing today. And Al, this is the same pattern that you, Lucas used in 1995 with Thunder Gulch. He won the Florida Derby, lost the Bluegrass, and then popped home here in the run for the Roses. By the way, Cape Town has a new jockey today, Jerry Bailey. Jerry Bailey, one of the very best. And, of course, one of the very best is Chris McCarron. And Chris McCarron will be the jockey aboard Artax. And we'll check out our tax, and there he is. And and uh, a couple of months ago, he might have been the favorite for the Kentucky Derby, but then he threw in a dull third at Santa Anita. But Al, maybe a couple early stakes races at Santa Anita took a toll in the Sa in the Santa Anita Derby itself. And if you throw out the Derby, then he's got to be one of the big contenders here. That's Chris with the red cap. Hallery Hunter, we mentioned before, Mike Smith, had he not been hurt, might have been on this horse. And Mike, you have worked him out in the past. What do you think of this horse? Yeah, I sure have. And Dave, you know, you mentioned the 95 Derby and Thunder Gulch. This horse reminds me a whole lot of Thunder Gulch. What he lacks in size, he has in heart. You don't mind getting bounced around. He'll go through tight spots. This is the kind of horse that wins the Kentucky Derby. Some of the Sharpies, Mike, are putting a few bucks down on parade ground, a horse who was a well-beaten third in the wood, but you were on this horse's back in his maiden race. What about him? I certainly was, and what I liked about this colt was he has a tremendous turn of foot. If you'll remember the Tampa Bay Derby, that last 16th of a mile, he was flying. One of the horses that will be flying out of the gate is Old Trieste, and Dave, he had a workout the other day that would have won any six furlong <laughs> race in the world. In 109, but today's grueling mile and a quarter is a little bit more, but he's bred for this distance, and an interesting story is that his sire, A.P. Indy, was scratched the morning of the 1992 Kentucky Derby, and A.P. Indy would have been the favorite that afternoon. Maybe his kid will make amends for the dad. Let's take a look at Victory Gallop. I thought this horse might have been a shorter price. I'm looking at the board right now. He's 14 to 1, coming off two wins and a victory over favorite trick. Two outs, two wins this year. He'll be flying at the fence. Well, Mike, when you signed the contract to work with us, part of the deal was you had to pick the winner or you gave back half of your fee. <laughs> so I'm putting you on the spot. Who do you like? I tell you, I, like, I got to stick with Hallowee Hunter. With Hallowee Hunter? That's the one I, I like. I Co like him a lot. Coming from behind. Coming Come from behind, making a big run at the end, and running by him on the outside. The Bluegrass Derby double. Dave Johnson, you were uh, on uh, Silver Charm's uh, nose last year as you got us off the schneid after a, a, a seven-year drought. Who do you like? 
Uh, tomorrow the headline will read, Lucas and Bailey do it again. They win it this time with Cape Town. Who do you like? I'm with you. I think Cape Town, but uh, be real quiet. He's okay. in my exact <laughs> as well. Right. Charlie, who do you like? Well, I love Indian Charlie, but today is going to be about seasoning and experience and a race over the track. And guys, Cape Town, me too. He's got all that and more. Leslie? Charlie, I agree with Mike Smith. I think that Hallery Hunter has improved with every race. He's been able to handle traffic, been knocked around a little. He's a great stretch runner, great for Churchill Downs. It's the Celtic Pride Stable with Nick Zito and Rick Patino. So I'm going with the luck of the Italians. Jim, who do you like? Well, you know, the last favorite to win was in 1979. I think that was the last year I picked the winner. But I'm going to go with Cape Town to make Bill Young and Wayne Lucas and Jerry Bailey happy men tonight. Now, when we come back, the nostalgic strains of Stephen Foster's great song that makes us all Kentuckians for a day, My Old Kentucky Home. Well, the gates opened at 8 o'clock this morning. It's now about a quarter past five. We're about 15 minutes away from the running of the 124th Kentucky Derby. Wayne Lucas, once again in the paddock, saddling his 33rd Derby horse, Chris McCarron who has been to the winner's circle twice. Alex Solis is seeking his first derby win. Riders up is the call. And the 15 jockeys all getting a leg up. Kent DeStormo up on real quiet. Chris McCarron will be mounting our tax momentarily. And let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie. Al, Wayne Lucas gave Jerry Bailey the final instructions. He told him to follow Artax to the first turn, then drop in four wide. He said to Jerry Bailey, you are the best in the world at what you do, and at the quarter pole, Cape Town's pedigree will kick in. Al. Mm. Wayne Lucas knows what it's like to give a good pep talk. He's an old basketball coach. Robin Wood, one of the two horses in the mutual field. Early fires is aboard. He first rode in the Derby 24 years ago. Steve Buttleman is the bugler. The horse is right now making their way through the tunnel and out onto the track. The management and staff of Churchill Downs proudly present the 124th running of the Kentucky Derby. Please rise for the playing of my old Kentucky home, performed today by the University of Louisville Band, directed by Dr. Frederick Speck. Could Stephen Foster have known he'd be so much a part of the tradition of the Kentucky Derby and will be forever? One of the great moments in sports. Now the post parade. Number one, 
is national lore. This is a horse who has never won a race. He's been to the post 15 times, but he's won over a quarter million dollars. Number two is a real contender, real quiet. Mike Pagram owns him. He's one of the Bob Baffert horses. Kent DeSormo coming into his own right now, had a great meeting at Santa Anita, won the jockey title. Hallory Hunter is number three, the Zito Patino horse. They bring Corey Nakatani, one of the top jocks in the West, east to ride him. He won the Bluegrass Stakes with Gary Stevens up. Cholito comes out of Florida. The Britisher Graham Motion is the trainer. Gary Boulanger gets his first derby mount. This horse won the Flamingo, speed horse. Hanneman Highway is an Irish bred. Kathy Walsh becomes the eighth woman to saddle a derby starter. David Flores in from California for the ride. Number six is favorite trick. Nine wins and then the third in Arkansas. Pat Day has ridden every one of his races. Bill Mott, the trainer, elected to the Hall of Fame earlier this week. Number seven is Indian Charlie, the other Baffert entry. He is ridden by Gary Stevens. This horse is green. He's raced four times, won all four, including the Santa Anita Derby. Number eight is Rock and Roll. The Diet Queen Jenny Craig and Madeline Paulson, the wife of Alan Paulson, decided they wanted a derby starter. They bought this horse. His total lifetime earnings to this point, $46,000. Parade ground is number nine. Will Farish is the chairman of Churchill Downs. The owner of the horse, Neil Howard, trains him. Number 10 is Cape Town, the Lucas horse. The Lucas Bailey connection, it doesn't get any better than that. Won the Florida Derby when Lil's Lad was disqualified. Number 11 is Artax. Figures to be near the front. Randy Bradshaw, a Lucas protege, is the trainer. Chris McCarron is the jockey. Number 12 will be Victory Gallop. We talked with Elliot Walden before, the Walden family seeing their first derby starter. Alex Solis comes east to ride him. He's won five of his seven lifetime starts. Old Trieste with a tremendous workout last week. Another speed horse figures to go right to the front, trained by Mike Pipey. Robbie Alvarado is the jockey. And then the field horses, basic trainee John Velasquez is the jockey. Jorge Romero is the trainer. And Robin Wood, the final horse in the field, Early Fires gets his sixth derby mount, but it's the first time Early Fires has been a jockey in the Kentucky Derby since 1974. What a story. The field of 15 ready to go to the post. The derby is seven minutes away. The combination is improbable. Half a ton of horse flesh, poised on legs no thicker than a man's. Power and grace aimed at one goal, to run with heart and perhaps to win the day. Under the ancient twin spires, they've come to Churchill Downs for the Kentucky Derby. Indian Charlie, the pride of California, is lightly raced, but undefeated. Can he maintain his streak today? Or will it be Hallory Hunter, who beat another undefeated star, Lil's Lad, in the Bluegrass States? Or favorite trick, a chastened super horse on a quest for redemption? The horses are new each year, but the spires and the roses are eternal. It's almost time for the Kentucky Derby. And the horse is making their way to the starting gate. Let's have a last look now at the odds. This field of 15 with 14 betting interests breaking from the inside. National lore, rank outsider, at least 99 to 1. Real quiet, 8 to 1. Hallory Hunter is 6 to 1. Cholito at 30 to 1. Hanneman Highway is 20 to 1. Then favorite trick right now is the second choice, 4 to 1. The favorite is Indian Charlie, 7 to 2 when we came on the air, 5 to 2 at the moment. Rock and roll is 45 to 1. Parade ground, 20 to 1. Cape Town is 9 to 2, the third pick. Artax at 11 to 1. Victory Gallop at 14 to 1. Old Trieste is 30 to 1. And the field horses, Basic Craney and Robin Wood at odds of 60 to 1. Rick Patino, the coach of the Boston Celtics. Rick Patino, the owner of Hallory Hunter. And Rick, in a, in a Final Four situation, you're in control. That has to be one sort of feeling. Now it's totally out of your control. How do you compare it? Oh, it's a totally different experience. I, I've I've got my family with me, and I think I've got the best horse trainer in the business, so that's all we can do. And we need a little racing luck, and 
win or lose, we, we're so excited that Nick has given us this thrill of a lifetime. I know you can really appreciate the fact, Rick, people spend their whole lives and never get to the Derby, and here you are, a relatively new horse owner at the Kentucky Derby. Well, we, don't, we know we don't deserve to be here from a horse racing standpoint, but that's the beautiful thing about horse racing. Uh, you can catch lightning in a bottle, and we, we certainly have caught it, and we're honored to be here. Good luck to you, Rick. Thank you. We'll need a little bit. Okay, Rick and, and Nick Zito, who got to the winner's circle with Strike the Gold in 91, and again with Go for Gin in 94, and that fabulous shot provided from the Bud One airship hovering high above Churchill Downs. The track is fast. In fact, a track record was set, and another was equal earlier. John Gaines, the owner of the fabled Gainesway Farm, and the, and the man who actually came up with the idea for the Breeders' Cup and has watched that develop into one of the incredible days in racing. One of the part owners of Indian Charlie bought into the horse. And there he is, number seven, at odds of five to two. So Indian Charlie and Real Quiet, two Bob Baffert horses. Baffert was second here by a nose with Cavanier two years ago. And now he brings another cowbred in after winning the race last year with Silver Charm. The field ready to load, and for the call of the race, let's go to Dave yeah, Johnson. The... There's Indian Charlie, Gary Stevens. Basic trainee, rock and roll. Jack Nagel, the starter. Real quiet with Kent DeSormo getting ready for this 124th running of the Kentucky Derby. There's Cape Town, Jerry Bailey looking for another Derby win. Hallery Hunter is in. Chris McCarron, a two-time winner of the run for the Roses with our tax. Cholito, the speed. Look for Old Trieste. Cholito and our tax out front early. Here goes Victory Gallup. He'll be running late. Just one horse in the auxiliary gate. Mike, pick up his one horse's tail, will you? Old Trieste yeah. also expected to be out there Hold up, man, early. Hardy. And Robin Wood goes Greg. into the other gate. Right. They're all three-year-olds. They all carry 126 pounds. Quarter mile run to the finish line and then once more around. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. And Old Trieste stumbled at the start but recovers quickly. Cholito on the inside takes the early lead, and favorite trick is right there in rock and roll. Up with the early leaders, Old Trieste in the middle of the racetrack has recovered and is right up with the early leaders, passing us for the first time. It's Old Trieste on the outside, and at the rail, it's rock and roll, and the long shot rock and roll with Francisco Torres has it by a head. Old Trieste challenges Cholito, is racing in third. Indian Charlie is fourth. Pat Day with favorite trick hugs the rail in fifth, saving some ground around that turn. Real quiet is next. Then comes Robin Wood. Then on the outside, it's Cape Town, Hanneman Highway. On the outside, that's uh, Artax with the red and black colors. Three lengths farther back, basic trainee. And then that final group of horses, Parade Ground, Hallery Hunter. Along the inside, National Lore. And at the back of the pack, it's Victory Gallop, who's 15th and last. They race down the back stretch after a half mile in 45.75, and now Old, Old Trieste has drawn clear by three lengths. Rock and roll is second. Cholito is moving up, and Indian Charlie with Gary Stevens, a bold move on the outside there. There goes Indian Charlie with the red cap moving quickly into second position. They're on the turn. It's Old Trieste in front, and here comes Real Quiet, fastest of all, with Kent DeSormo. Indian Charlie is between horses. Cape Town behind a wall of horses, and favorite trick at the rail is racing fifth. They're at the top of the lane in the Derby, and Real Quiet on the outside gets the lead. Indian Charlie in second, and Cape Town is racing third, but gaining. Victory Gallup from far back is fourth, and moving up, Hallery Hunter is next. Down the stretch they come. Real Quiet leads it. Victory Gallup on the outside with a last desperate move. In the final stride, Real Quiet can't disarm out. Yes, Real Quiet wins it. Bob Baffert, two in a row. On the outside, it was Victory Gallup who came from absolutely last to finish second. Bob Baffert gets his second victory. Kent DeSormo gets his first. Elliot Walden, a big race for him, almost there with Victory Gallup.
What a finish as Real Quiet, who's been racing in the shadow of Indian Charlie, comes out at his own in the sunshine at Churchill Downs and wins the run for the road. Real Quiet, and they kept him real quiet this week. 12 lifetime starts, two wins, but Baffert said yesterday, he said, I'll tell you one thing, this horse will be first, second, or third. Nine times in the money, but only two wins, and there is no one more elated than Kent DeSormo, because this is a coming of age for a jockey who was so brilliant as an apprentice in Maryland, so much was expected of him. Bob Baffert now making his way to the winner's circle, but DeSormo then plateaued, had some trouble away from the track, got his act back together. Had a terrific meeting at Santa Anita this year. Won the jockey title. Picks like up the mount on real life. quiet. And Kent DeSormo no like has that. won his first Kentucky Derby. Gary, thank you so much. Thanks for the first. Finishing the second was victory home. gallop with Don't a late charge. And Indian Charlie, we believe, is third, though there is a photo finish for third. The odds, 8 to 1. That means that real quiet will play in the neighborhood of $18 for the victory. But Kent DeSormo picking the dead right time to make his move after Gary Stevens had made an early move on Indian Charlie to swing him to the front. He took the lead, but DeSormo came up on the outside, and there are the unofficial results with real quiet winning it. Victory Gallup was second, a photo for third. We believe it was Indian Charlie, and this horse was purchased for a total of $17,000. So it's the other Baffert horse giving Bob a second consecutive victory. And Mike Smith and Dave Johnson will join me. And Mike, let's take a look at first the move by Gary Stevens to go to the front, but then here comes DeSormo. Here's Christmas season who comes out. If you watch right here, this other horse is probably run about 10 to 12 times. This other horse is run four times, which is uh, Indian Charlie on the inside and real quiet on the outside there. And it just came out there about the eighth hole. I tell you, if you remember last year, Alex Solis lost a photo in the Kentucky Derby, and I'll be darned if it happened again. That's two times. Ah! I thought about when he was going to get out and the Sormo biding his time early in the race, and that's figured, and real quiet, he was very happy with the post position. Baffert said it couldn't have worked any better for this horse. All we wanted was for him to save ground early, so they chose post number three for him a great ground saving post and then DeSormo was able to work him uh, out of trouble and cleanly around the first turn and down the backside and then pick the optimum moment and swung him to the outside and brings him home for the victory. Uh, just rode a beautiful race. I tell you, I give a million dollars to be in this spot right now. <laughs> Indian Charlie is indeed third as they've looked at the photo. Hallery Hunter winds up fourth and Kent DeSormo, the happiest guy in the state of Kentucky, aboard real quiet and on his way to the winner's circle. So a $17,000 purchase. Kent DeSormo. Bob Baffert, well, he's made this trip before. one you expected to win with? Come on! I love you! For you! Happy anniversary! I know you're up there! Real quiet. Woo! Bred at the Little Hill Farm here in Kentucky, sired by Quiet American. The dam really blew. And $581,000 in earnings coming into the Derby. That will be more than doubled when this result is official. This horse finished second at the Santa Anita Derby to Indian Charlie. He was second to Artax in the San Felipe. He ran a terrible race at the Golden Gate Derby. His last win was the Hollywood Futurity as a two-year-old last December. And this the 13th start of his career. And Kent DeSormo. <laughs> when, when, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about the, the, the travails that he's had, Mike. And for a guy like DeSormo, uh, it's been the perfect year so far. It really has. You called it earlier whenever you said he's, he's just really excelled. Uh, he's really brought his riding up to another level. This race right here is just going to, this, this race right here is just going to put him over the top. I mean, this is, this is, this is what he needed right here. 
So the Baffert horses run one and three. And victory gallop, the Arkansas Derby winner and the winner of the Rebel Stakes and the horse trained by Elliot Walden of the longtime Kentucky horse breeding family with a late charge, but not enough to run down a real quiet who's pretty much bred to run all day. And that's what you have to be to win the Kentucky Derby. So all of the questions have pretty much been answered. Favorite trick could not outrun his pedigree. Our tax, uh, well, it wasn't uh, a fluke, his dull performance at the Santa Anita Derby. <laughs> And Kent DeSormo, you can hear him with Go Baby Go, the new rallying cry of the National Thoroughbred, Thoroughbred Racing Association. What a cloud. This cloud is high, baby. Woo! And a moment to, to savor for cloud. Kent DeSormo. Well, Dave, this was a horse who just kept, I don't want to say plodding along all year. He was right there. That's he was in the money very Kentucky. often, but... Uh, Bob Baffert said, uh, you know, yesterday when we were talking with him, he said, look, he said, I don't, I don't know if he wins, but I know he's going to finish on the board. It, it's kind of a shame that he was running in the shadow of uh, Indian Charlie earlier this year because he really uh, raised some eyebrows out on the West Coast. And Kent DeSormo, what a great two-minute ride into history this afternoon. Bob Baffert is the trainer of the moment. Maybe the trainer of the year or the night is he's uh, the second with Cavanier two years ago. But last year, won the Derby with Silver Charm. And look at him here with a lucky tie on, Woo! winning it again. With two rooting interests right there. At one point in the race, he probably thought it was Indian Charlie's race. As Stevens made the move on the heretofore unbeaten Indian Charlie. And there was Elliot Walden just trying to squeeze a little bit more out of victory gallop but not enough at the end 15th to second good news and bad news so bob baffert a funny guy he's a media darling and, and if you saw the piece on him and have seen a number of pieces that have been done on bob in recent years he's got a wonderful sense of humor he was the guy who as a quarter horse trainer on halloween night won a race at los alamitos in southern california and wore a pumpkin shell to the winner's circle loves to laugh Loves to have a great time, and you can't have a greater time than he's had here the last two years. There it is, 1880 for the victory. 880 for the place, 580 for the show. $13.760 are the place prices for Victory Gallop and 420 for Indian Charlie to show. And we'll get you the exacta and trifecta prices. Exacta pays 290180. There it is. And the try, 1,221 with a superfecta over $3,000. The time, 202 and one at the Kentucky Derby. So it's another celebration for Team Baffert as real quiet wins the 124th running of the Kentucky Derby. The replays, the interviews, the pomp and circumstance when we come back to Churchill Downs. Complete order of finish now. Real Quiet is the winner. Victory Gallup second. And Indian Charlie nosing out Hallery Hunter. Cape Town, not enough at the end. Fifth. Parade Ground was sixth. The Irish bred Hanneman Highway. Favorite trick was eighth. So nine wins in a row. Then the third. Then the eighth. National or ninth. Old Trieste, a speedy start and a slow finish. Cholito, a speedy start and a slow finish. Robin Wood was 12th. Our tax never showed anything. Rock and Roll was next to last. And Basic Trainee rounds out the complete order of finish here in the Kentucky Derby. The Blanket of Roses adorning real quiet, at least for the moment. Kent DeSormo savoring the moment. We have the horse isolated. And let's go back, Dave Johnson, and we'll take a look at the start of the race. Well, first of all, you saw there in uh, post-14, Old Trieste had a terrible beginning and recovered pretty quickly. Now let's watch uh, number two real quiet come out of the gate a little bit to the inside but uh, he gets away cleanly here comes the four Cholito 
the speed ball as expected with Gary Boulanger jumped to the front and Pat Day this was uh, one of the parts of the race that he was in and he got to the rail to save some time as rock and roll that long shot moved up on the outside and old Trieste recovered. Well Mike Smith Bob Baffer said yesterday he was thrilled with the number three post and you can see why that's exactly what Bob wanted the storm to do here. Exactly he had great position around around this first turn here and I'll tell you it was a blazing half mile they, they, they moved right along pretty good it really set up for a closer he was able to, to kind of ease him out right about right about here and get in a clear spot and the rest is history all right so DeSormo is just biding his time at what point now will he begin to look at what he wants to do let's say over the next hundred yards well, he's, he's watching from really from the word go Al and even right now he's already he's, he knows what he has right now he, he knows who's in front of him he's just worried about not probably not getting trapped in there and right now just kind of biding his time just waiting to call on him now, does he want to get off the rail at a particular point? That, well, yeah, because the speed horses are coming back to him now, so they'll be stopping in his face, so he needs to get a clear trip. And at this point, he's looking to the outside. Exactly. He's want to make, want to make sure not to get trapped down in there. <laughs> following in, in, following in, in Charlie, right here. You can see him just following him here. You can see Artex here come on the outside, but boy, when he calls on this call, he just jumps through the bridle. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go right within the end, Charlie, and into the outside. Right here. Moment of truth right that's here. That's a look of panic right there. You know, he looked over to the outside. He knew he, that horse got the jump. Well, not necessarily got the jump on him. He just couldn't keep up with him. Victory gallops way back, but he makes a tremendous run with Alex Solis. I kind of feel bad for Alex a little bit. Last year, he just missed it, and, and here it happens again. He ran a great race. And right now, uh, Ken Toller and go, baby, go. <laughs> Go, baby, go all the way to the like, wire. Looks like he can go. Yeah. He does. Red for distance. The AT&T winning moment right there. Kent DeSormo as a bullion and effusive and demonstrative as any jock in the business right now. He wins his first Kentucky Derby, real quiet to the winner's circle. It wins the Derby, and we go to Jim McKay. All right, Al, thank you, and what an honor it is to be up here for the 24th time in a row. There's Tom Meeker, here's Carl Pasquarella back here, one of the great friends of racing, the chairman and CEO of Visa, and a new commissioner and CEO of the National Thoroughbred Racing Association, Tim Smith. He's back in there. I, don't know he, I think we can see him. Tom, I don't know what else you could ask for. A beautiful day, a wonderful race, a crowd of 143,000, the third largest in history. What else would you like? Well, it was uh, real quiet until a while ago, and then yeah. now, now we've got a pretty oh, good thing good. going. Good. It's just a great day. The Kentucky Derby is, uh, you know, exemplifies what racing is all about, and it brings together uh, a lot of people, which is terrific, and it gives back to a lot of people who are terrific for our sport. And today, I want to congratulate Mike and, of course, Bobby and his great training exercise. He seems like we're, we're going to meet him every year up on the stand here. And in Kent, his first win in the Kentucky Derby was a great day. And it uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce our governor, Paul Patton, who will present the trophy uh, to the winners. Okay, Governor. Well, there's nothing more beautiful than a May, a Kentucky in May, except possibly Thoroughbreds running for the Roses. And this was a great race of champions. Real Quiet's a real champion. Uh, Mike Pegman is a Pegram, fine Pegram, a great owner. Congratulations. I think we have a new legend uh, beginning in uh, Mr. Baffert. Congratulations. Governor? Thank you, sir. How about this? Take the top of it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's move across this distinguished group now to Charles E. Canning. Charles e. Mike, one year ago, you listened as your friend Bob Baffert dedicated his Kentucky Derby victory with Silver Charm to you, and thanks for bringing him over from quarter horse racing into thoroughbreds. Did you ever dream a year later you'd be standing here? You know, I told everybody that day I felt like I just won the Kentucky Derby, and I experienced the feeling then, and now I did it again today. And, you know, Bobby is a great friend. And the only difference of the day is we got all my great friends here. You know, I had a dream one night. Say, what would you do if you won the Kentucky Derby and your friends didn't show up? Well, I got a lot of friends, and this is for you. All right, you've done the job here. What about two weeks from today? Preakness? Where's that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
that you know what the day I, I don't want the day in so why would I think two weeks from today you know enjoy. there's a lot of beer to drink tonight <laughs> enjoy every minute of it That's fun one. congratulations <laughs> Okay, there's more yet to come. We'll be talking to Bob Baffert, twice victorious trainer, and going over the race again with jockey Kent Pizormo, world record holder for mo most wins in a year, and now the pilot of the Derby winner. Back at Churchill Downs, the Bud One airship providing the scenics from high above. All of the activity now taking place in the winner's circle, and we go to Charlesy Canty. Charlesy. Well, I'm with the engineers of this victory by Real Really Quiet. We've got Kent Sormo, the jockey, and his buddy Joshua, and we've got Bob Baffert, who's now won two Kentucky Derbies. Kent has finally won his first, and it fell right into place for this team. We'll take a look from the far turn. Early fractions, 22 and what, 22 and three, 45 and three. It looked good for you from there, Kent. Well, uh, here was the first question I asked him to, to move on forward, and, and he really started reaching for the wire. I was just hoping that uh, no one caught us from this point. As, uh, my first feeling was a feeling of shock uh, when we hit the wire, and then and then I, I, I wanted to laugh for a little while and then cry for a little while. I just didn't... I, I had three emotions run through my head, but at this moment right now, most men owe women, but I owe three men in my life right now, Bab Baffert, Mike Pegram, and my father, for always having racehorses in my backyard. Bob Baffert, you must have had some split emotions. You had two horses in this race. Certainly, you're thrilled to win it. What were your feelings through the stretch? Well, when they came around the turn, I saw Indian Charlie was in a perfect spot, and then I saw the fish that's uh, real quiet making his move, and I thought, I couldn't believe it. They, they were moving. They were at the right place at the right time, and uh, I wanted to run one-two with him so bad, and it was just, you know, it was emotional, but I mean, I never thought after winning with Silver Charm that I would feel that inner emotion, but I, it gets better every time you win it. It gets, keeps getting better year after year. Consecutive victories I'm for, I'm back. <laughs> for Bob Baffert. We know you are, Bob, but we're going back to Al Michaels right now. Woo! Yeah, let me see you kick your heels. <laughs> Did you kick his heels, Mike? I was down there in the air. Uh, <laughs> Real quiet with Kent DeSormo and Bob Baffert, winner of the Kentucky Derby. See you at the Freakness in two weeks from Boston.